All right. I thought I would, uh, for the next video, I thought I would show how you can set your own custom defaults for generate blocks. So a lot of you probably know what generate blocks is. Um, Tom has created, oh, first of all, I discovered in a podcast, uh, finally how to, uh, to say Tom's name correctly. I believe it is Tom Usborne. So in the WP Builds podcast, I think it was episode 32, they interviewed Tom. And uh, it was a great uh, interview, by the way, kind of early. I think it's 2017, so it was a little early. But anyway, <laughs> so Tom also created Generate Blocks as a great complement to Generate Press. And also, this is not a how to use Generate Blocks. Uh, Mike Oliver, uh, go to YouTube and search for Mike Oliver Design uh, or search for uh, using Generate Blocks. Uh, he's already done at least two videos, I think, maybe more than that, on some great tutorial stuff for just using Generate Blocks. But I'm going to show you how to set defaults so that, like, for example, when you put in a button in your page from Generate Blocks, um, the button picks up on the styling of what you've set in Generate Press, or, you know, maybe you, what I'm going to show is the container, um, how it has the default padding of 40 pixels, and we'll jump over and look at that now um, on my about page. So this is my blog that I'm, you know, still working on that I never use. Uh, <laughs> but it's a great uh, way to tinker and to do these videos. So this is my little bitty about page. I thought I'd drop in. Um, you know, let's see. We will add a container. So these are all generate blocks. Uh, blocks. There are only four, but you can do so much with them. Uh, so let's put in a container. And as we'll see, I'm going to make it full width. So this container has a default spacing or padding, 40 pixels all the way around. And I generally find myself um, changing it or just to add some color to it so we can see it a little better. Yeah, I normally find myself setting it to, you know, maybe 80 or 100 on the top and bottom. I just like that little extra space, especially on the, the desktop size. So what if I want to change that to always be 80 on the top and bottom whenever I put in uh, a container block? You can do that. Um... So let's first make sure that, okay, so I have in my ink folder, this is my Generate Press child theme, which you can find on GitHub. Uh, there's a link in the description. I want to look at my Generate Blocks uh, .php file, but first I have my functions .php file open, and I want to make sure that it is, there it is. Yeah, Generate Blocks is included. And so let's open that. And I'm not going to go into great detail about all this. Um, I'll show you where I got this. So Tom responded to a forum post where a gentleman wanted uh, his buttons to pick up on the styling. His, let me back up. He wanted his ge generate blocks buttons to pick up on the same styling that he had indicated in generate press that he had set up. So the buttons in generate press that styling should carry over to the buttons and generate blocks because it doesn't by default. So I swipe that bit of code here that Tom provided and kind of did some more digging and found a way to pull. There are two sets of defaults. This OG defaults for buttons and this GPC theme settings. Now th these are mine. I, I'm, I'm, uh, naming these, telling it to get the default fonts. I can't remember what fonts does. I looked that up. Um, you also have to get it from theme settings. Uh, yeah, generate settings. So from generate settings, I'm grabbing the generate uh, get color defaults and the default fonts. And then from here, so I think what it's doing is this part, settings, is getting the things that I've changed in the customizer. 
and generate press. This is getting the things that are out of the box default before anything has changed in generate press, I think. And then I'm grabbing specific values down here, like the font family for the buttons and the font size for the buttons. And then in other places, I can just say, give me the form button background color, give me the hover color, give me the text color, give me the text hover color, <laughs> and things like that. Um, and I'm applying them to the default settings for Generate Press. So where do you find these settings? So you have to go to, and I've indicated it here in the comments, um, this, the CSS output is something else in, uh, that goes with this, but here's where we want to look. WP content, plugins, generate blocks, includes, and defaults. So here we get this great big list. This is an array. It's just a PHP array. It, it's a, a variable in PHP that holds lots of different values. So you can look through here and see here's the default container width. And he's grabbing it from generate press, which is up here. But you can see there's like uh, the outer container is set to full, the inner is set to contained, the the height min height unit is set to pixels, um, the padding unit is set to pixels, and here's that default padding, 40, 40, 40, 40 for the top right, bottom, and left. These are the ones I want to change. I want to change that padding top and padding bottom to, let's say, 100. So, knowing what that is. And defaults, container, padding top, and padding bottom. I can use the same syntax. Come down here and let's add a new comment for container. And I want to grab what's found in defaults, container. Oop. Oh, all right killed it now let's try that again defaults container and how was it done was it camel case yes so padding top and padding bottom why is it doing that vs code Okay, fine, I'll use the cursor. Equals, and I give it a value, 100. And I'm gonna duplicate this and change this to bottom. And in case you're wondering, like, I'm going through <laughs> the, the levels of the array. So we know it's default, container, and then you can do another set of brackets to retrieve this element or this portion of the array. And then I can change the value. So defaults, container, padding top. Defaults, container, padding bottom. And they both should equal 100. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to go back. I'm going to delete this block. And I'm going to put in a new one. Container. And it doesn't look like it's changed because I didn't refresh my page. Sorry about that. Reload. Yeah, I know. Okay, let's try that one more time. So container. Ah, now it looks like my settings have gone away. Here we go. So the spacing for this container default out of the box, so to speak, when I place a new one is now 100 on the top and 100 on the bottom. That's exactly what I wanted. So it's that easy. And Tom was really clever to build these settings in. And he didn't, I don't think this is in the documentation, but you can look on the forums like I did. Uh, well, and generate press and, and do, check the Facebook community. If you're not a member of the Facebook community, uh, go to Facebook and look for the Generate Press community and join it because there's a lot of great help there. <clears throat> um, 
yeah, so this is just uh, the tip of the iceberg, so to speak. You can change the defaults for any of these elements. So even if I wanted to affect, you know, I've got the, the, the default view now for the desktop version, but say I want to change the tablet top and bottom and the mobile top and bottom, I can do that too. Um, one other thing that you can do, like for example, for the button here, if you want to affect, if you want to set generate blocks to pick up on styling from the generate press settings, like these button settings, you can look at this and see what I've done sort of <laughs> to grab these defaults. And again, this OG defaults was, uh, I believe that is before you've changed anything. That is generate presses defaults. And then this GPC theme settings is the settings as they're changed in generate press. So anything I've changed customized in the customizer in generate press will be stored in this um, array I believe I can call it or object maybe that's more accurate um, and if you want to get a better look at how what's stored in those so this little bit is uh, commented out but you can uncomment it save it go back to your page and yeah, I'll update, okay. But I still need to refresh. And that header warning is, I don't know why that's there, but anyway, view the source, and now you get this array, and you can see what things are set to. So here's the, the defaults. I guess that's the uh, defaults that Generate Press has out of the box, like I said. Navigation, font widget title. And then down further, we have the theme setting. So here's, for example, anything I've changed. Um, and it might have some of the same uh, values. But like, for example, here's the H1 color. H2 color, H3 color. And I haven't changed the H4, H5, or H6. So these are saved uh, in WordPress in the database after I've made the changes in the customizer. Um, and I don't know what other ones may be. I think this widget background color. So any of these values that you say, you know what, I want to apply values I've saved in Generate Press to things in Generate Blocks, you can do that with these. So you can see the GPC theme settings. I've grabbed form button background color to apply to the Generate Blocks button background color. Um, I'll go into that in more detail in another video if you like, but this, it, this is just meant to be a simple, quick, you know, let me change the default padding. Let me change the default font size on something, um, stuff like that. So that's it. Um, I haven't done this yet, but um, I'm having a lot of fun with these and I hope people are finding them helpful. So I ask that you subscribe. I plan to keep making these. Um, give me feedback, leave me comments, what would you like to see done next? Um, I have my own little list of things that I'm going to keep doing and uh, perhaps even review some other plugins that I like to use to complement my Generate Press install. Um, but that's it for now. You guys have fun developing and uh, I'll see you next time. <laughs> Thanks.